If you're interested, you can click the link in the description to become a Patreon member, and a massive thank you to Amelia for becoming one yesterday. Thank you for your support across the week as well. This video covers an in-depth recap of Boeing and its aircraft. It was a busy air show, and let us not waste any time now and take a look at just what occurred. Starting with Delta, who announced an order for up to 130 of the 737 MAX 10 aircraft. The order comprises of 100 total orders and a further 30 options, should the airline eventually wish to activate them. The order has been among the most highly talked about for some time and it was a matter of when, not so much as if. Delta, therefore, thanks to this order, became the last primary US carrier to order and eventually operate the 737 MAX, an essential move for Boeing and one that definitely looks very good. Next, we saw the reconfirming of an order we heard about last week that includes all Nippon Airways, more commonly referred to as ANA, with the carrier announcing plans to confirm the 737 MAX and 777-8F for future operations, with both the mainline brand and finally the freighter sector. Regarding the 777-8Fs, the airline did announce plans to convert two of the passenger-9s towards the freighter version, the 777-8F. As for the MAX, well, they're welcome up to 30. This is made up of 20 firm orders and 10 options should they wish to activate those. 777 Partners announced plans to expand their aircraft catalogue with commitments of up to 66 aircraft, including a firm agreement for 30 of the 737-8 200s, the ultra-efficient and also high-capacity variant of the series. It builds the total portfolio to 130 aircraft, and it also means that the likelihood of Flair, Bonza and airlines in the Value Alliance operating the type is highly likely, especially considering the 777 Partners being an essential in investment in these said airlines and alliance. Sticking with the MAX, Aviation Capital Group also announced plans to order 12 of the 737-8 aircraft, the middle ground variant if you will. Another further commitment emphasises their backing of the plane and reaffirming what a successful air show it was for the 737 MAX. ACG will utilise the new acquisition to meet the airline's demands moving forward. Qatar Airways and Boeing also announced plans to finalise an order for 25 of the 737 MAX aircraft, specifically the Dash 10 variant variant which has received several sizable commitments this week alone. The order is certainly unique, especially with the ongoing tensions involving Airbus. Being ideally suited to their operations at Qatar, it has been noted that the aircraft will be deployed on short to medium haul flights. Cargo Lux, meanwhile, announced plans during the last few days of the airshow to select the 777-8 freighter as their preferred replacement moving forward for the aging 747-400Fs. The announcement is not quite an MOU or even an order, but rather Cargo Lux emerging and just noting their preference. The 777-8F is expected to enter the industry towards the back end of this decade, and we should find out more about the specifics of this eventual order later down the line. Azerbaijan Airlines announced plans to expand their 787 fleets of aircraft with the signing of an MOU for four more of the 787-8 aircraft, the shortest member and smallest in the family, and the acquisition will allow for further expansion, and also in the future, more routes being included in the network, which is naturally a big bonus for Azerbaijan. Aircap also furthered its commitment to the 787, announcing that they would add five further aircraft moving forward. Eventually, these five aircraft will head towards airlines within the aviation industry, and what the order does mean is that the Global Lesser continues to be the largest customer for the 787 worldwide. Regarding other commitments during the 2022 Farnborough Air Show, while well, they centred a lot around the Boeing Converted Freighter program, with obligations for both the 737 Converted Freighter and finally yesterday a commitment involving the 767 Converted Freighter being all announced. And I guess you could say this really does reaffirm the need for a secondary use of these passenger aircraft being transitioned into the freighter market or on some occasions, them simply being manufactured as the freighter version. To the Flash Cuban, Neil, Don, Stefan, Jam, Eric, Daniel, and Al Walid, thanks for being cabin crew members. If you have any thoughts on how Boeing performed during the 2022 Farnborough Air Show, which I think was absolutely satisfactory, you can let me know down below in the comments. I really appreciate the support. Do take care and be safe, and I will see you next time.